Hey everyone, today we're going to bring you to the northeast kingdom of Vermont. We're that close to Vermont. But we just want to do a really quick, quick update before we do. Six weeks. Six whole weeks. Month and a half of full-time RV living in Maggie the RV. <laughs> we're still doing it, so you know we love it. <laughs> um, we're waiting on our 1,000 Trails membership pass, though. Yes, we are. When we sent in the transfer paperwork, they said it would be one, two weeks. It's been two weeks. We haven't heard anything. So, I'm calling Monday. Yeah, we're, we've got to figure out what's going on. So we can stop making reservations because mm -hmm. it's getting near time to move. Yeah. But all that aside, we had a couple of visitors this week. We did. First, there was Bill. He was staying here in the campground with his wife. He saw our sign. So Cheryl was out starting fire while Brandy and I were still here in the RV. <laughs> Bill comes over and says, hey, I saw a couple of your videos and I'd really like to meet Brandy. Would it be okay? Brandy? <laughs> Not even, hi, Cheryl. Or, hey, is Chuck here? No, <laughs> Brandy. And he didn't even have a dog. <laughs> That's Brandy has her own fan base. She really does. So <laughs> we've had a lot of people writing to us asking about her too. So quick update on Brandy. She's doing so much better in the RV. She can actually stay by herself now without howling. <laughs> We can actually go grocery shopping together. Yes, yes. <laughs> Instead of driving there, well, one of us sits in the vehicle with her while the other one goes in and shops. So things are getting to normal for Brandy. The other visitor that we had is a longtime subscriber to our We Are Mud Fun channel and a subscriber to our Get Gone With Us channel. Her name is Deb, and she came over one afternoon, spent the afternoon here. We had a great time visiting with her, and she's got a cameo appearance in the upcoming adventure to the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont. <laughs> oh, and just a note, she wanted to visit Maggie. Yeah, yeah, see, <laughs> can I can I meet Brandy? And she was, can I meet Maggie? So, told you we'd get you done. <laughs> um, we also have a shout out going to Evan. Evan is the reason that this adventure is even happening. He saw our uh, uh, Maplewood. Uh, Maplewood video, the eye that just popped up, we'll take you to there, and he suggested going to the Brunswick Springs to us. He thought that we would like it, and Evan, you're right, we did, we loved it. It was a good time, and you're, a lot of history up there. Great suggestion. So, uh, the only other person would be Tom Blackhawk. When we got out to the area, because we didn't even know exactly where this was. Cheryl and I bushwhacked to it, and we found out later that there's an easier, <laughs> there's way, an easier way. But we came through the bushwhack, and we ran into Tom, and Tom um, gave us some information. So that was pretty cool, too, because there was some stuff there that we didn't really understand what it was. Uh, and he is a American Indian, so from the Abenaki tribe. Abenaki tribe. So I guess without further ado... Let's roll it. Roll that tape. Today's adventure brings us to Brunswick, Vermont. Welcome to the Northeast Kingdom. <laughs> Today's adventure will bring us to a spring that was once called the Eighth Wonder of the World by Ripley's Believe It or Not. And we're really hoping it's down this path because we, we're not really sure. It may have looked like a road that we were starting on. <laughs> not now. Nope. That's been there forever. That's awesome. Look at that, huh? It's growing right around it. Wow, these bugs are ridiculous, huh? Oh, they're awful. <laughs> but look, we've made it to Silver Lake, and according to our research, we should be getting close now, so we're trucking on. <laughs> but these are our views. Yep. When we ran into Tom Blackhawk, he said that this is the campsite that people come to, and it has been known that you can see spirits at night going over the water, including the sorcerers. You know, the one who uh, made the curse? Yes. She's keeping an eye on the place. Yeah, watching over the spring. There may have been sightings of the Aurora Borealis, the northern lights up there. That would be so cool. Now, Tom also took us here to show us the sweat lodge. What you're looking at is a big fire pit. That is where the stones would be heated, and then they would be brought into the structure over there. Structure in the day was covered in moose or deer skin. Today, they just use blankets. What they do is they go in there, and you can see the offerings being hung there also, the prayer offerings. But the stones would be in there, and then there is a person who pours the water. Everybody sits there in a circle where they have smudge on them, and they pour water onto the rocks, and it causes steam to come up off them. Have you ever put a campfire out, and you get that rush of, of, of like hot water steam? steam? Yep. The reason they do that is it's a puring ritual. It detoxes the bodies of impurities. So, and they do it twice a year, once in the spring and once in the fall. Maybe we'll come back on and, and do one, huh? <laughs> now, if you look down, 
<laughs> apparently there's an easier way to get out here than Cheryl and I took. <laughs> we always take the hard way. I'm thinking this road probably joined into what we thought was a road. But we are skirting along Silver Lake looking for a towel to... Oh, I already, found, I already see it. <laughs> Where? Right over here. Check it out. Oh. A staircase. Hmm, things you find in the woods, huh? Yes, indeed. Hey, the staircase is over 100 years old, and it dates back to when an attempt was made to commercialize the mineral springs. So we're going to take you up top and show you what's up there. Once you come up those stairs, there are views of Silver Lake, and on this side, there are views of the Connecticut River and the mountains. There used to be park benches along the walkways so that everybody could sit and look at all the views. Yeah, all these trees were cut even more so that you could actually see the river. It is down there. <laughs> but look at what erosion's doing over here, hon. Yep. We're losing the edge. <laughs> at the top of the staircase, if you take a right, the path is going to bring you up here, where there is yet another set of stairs. Now at the bottom of the stairs, there is another landing that is going to take us down to the spring. The staircase will take us down to the mineral springs of the healing waters. Are you probably wondering, you said it was cursed. Yeah, it was cursed. Back in 1784 is where it would start when an injured soldier was brought here by the Apanathi people. And they cured all of his wounds with the water down here. Years later, he came back with investors who wanted to bottle and sell the water because, you know, a lot of money there when you have magic medicine. The Indians said, no, this is a gift from our great spirit. It's free for all to share. You can't do that. Well, you know how greed is. Struggle ensued, and um, in the end, two Abenaki members were killed. One was a small child. The mother of the small child was grief-stricken. She was also a sorceress. And it is said in legend that she put a curse on her, and she said anyone attempting to gain profit from these waters shall fail. Just like five hotels did, but we'll get to that in a bit. Now, when you come here, there are six separate springs. It's believed that they all fed from the same source. What's remarkable about that is they all contain a different mineral. This one here contains the mineral arsenic. You see that pipe? We're gonna explain where those pipes go. It had to do with the attempt to um, commercialize the place. Moving on to the second one. This one contained bromide, and you can see where the pipe is there. Continuing to move along to the right, this would be the sulfur, and trust me, you can smell this, and the pipe is right here. If anyone knows what this white stuff is, please let us know, because we have no clue. The fourth one in here would be magnesium, and you can also see the pipe there. Moving into the fifth one, this would be the calcium area, which is kind of hard to distinguish, but the, you see the pipe right here, and then the very last one over here would be iron. Now, if we go back, oh yeah, we don't know where the pipe is. It's gone on both sides. But panning back around, you can see over here, see how there's a distinct separation? One there, one there, so one, two, three. Over here, it's deteriorating, but you can see it was there, which would make four. Over here, it's even worse, which would make five, right? One, two, three, four, five. But over here, it's, it's all gone. It's just completely gone. But so isn't the land. So what's happening is they're all just combining now. And it's just bypassing it all. So it has been built up here to try to get them built back up. Why? Well, we're going to show you. Now naturally, before the attempt to commercialize this place, none of this was here. But because they did try to commercialize it, they wanted to get the water to send to the hotel that we'll show you. That's what all the pipes are. This here is the first one that we showed you up there, the arsenic. It is not enough to hurt you. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, my hands are dirty. So you have one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one's hardly even there, and the sixth one's completely gone. What I want you to look at though is notice the pipe. As we turn around, you can also see a pipe further down there. 
as we pan off to the right, that would have been the spring house. That's what would pump the water up to the hotel, as it was explained to us. We're gonna go check that out now. Now this would have been the spring house, where the pump would have been, as I said. As you can see, if I clear away a little up here, maybe. <laughs> There's one of the pipes right there. This is obviously fallen because, well, the back would actually be the bottom, <laughs> I presume. If we come around to the front, it looks as though somebody may have uh, seeked shelter under here <laughs> while visiting. But there is a pipe hole down there, and there is one off to the left also. Hi guys, we came out with Deb, one of our subscribers, and she is doing an offering to her creator. She is part Indian. And for those of you that didn't know, so is not Charlotte. She's part Micmac. Teeny tiny. All right, so we just took you down to the springs. You know what they are, and you know what the curse is. Did the curse ever do anything? Uh, yeah, <laughs> let's take a stroll across the way here to the remains of the motel. Now, Trying to research this, it's very, very hard to find facts. A lot of this is legend. And what we've come up with is there were a total of five hotels built. First one was in 1860, which went along without a problem until it was sold. And the new owner expanded it in 1894. And then he tried to bottle the water to sell it. His hotel abruptly burnt to the ground. Then supposedly he rebuilt it down along the riverbank on the Connecticut River and the foundation eroded and it fell into the river so he did nothing he died in 1910 John Hutchins bought the property because he saw dollar signs in his eyes I mean that was miracle water over there if he could build a hotel that had miracle water in it he would just make so much more money than any competitor so he built his motel in 1929 right before it opened it burnt down so he built it again 1930, all set for the grand opening. Reservations were coming in. Right before it opened, it burnt down. Depending what research you follow, he stopped. But there is another story out there that he did it one more time. He made it the grandest of them all. Four and a half stories high. A hundred rooms. They all had the mineral water coming in for their baths, drinking water. He had two brand new limousines that were gonna pick people up over in North Stratford from the train. This was becoming popular area. Before it opened, guess what happened? Yep, it burnt down. <laughs> Yet again. So whether or not he knew about the curse or not, you know, after three times, <laughs> even in baseball you're out. <laughs> after that, the Abenaki Indians were able to get all of this land as theirs, and now it is in a trust where nothing can be built here. So if you come up here, don't try and take any water, to try to sell it. Don't take any artifacts that you find over there. Leave everything as you see it because of the curse. Let me tell you, we're not, we don't believe in curses, but I can guarantee you this video won't be monetized. <laughs> not taking any chances. Nope. So over here, we're gonna walk to the left and we're gonna show you some views. So over there is Spruce Mountain. These are the views we're getting. And way back there is Hutchins Mountain. And then down below us is the Connecticut River. Now this is something we would normally put on our We Are Mud Fun channel, but we wanted to show the Get Gone With Us channel what we actually do as far as adventures go. A lot of the stuff that we do will be adventurous and will not cost any money. So until we do another video, I'm Chuck. And I'm Cheryl. We're Get Gone With Us. Bye. Bye.